everybody, welcome to a Spriggan's a Game painting tutorial for the Stormtide campaign from the 5th Trooper Network. This is going to be my first ever painting tutorial. This is going to be, at best, tabletop quality. I'm not the greatest painter, but I'm going to show you how to get these guys painted up on the battlefield and ready to go for your Stormtide campaign. So since they don't have a name, uh, this little gunslinger guy is going to be my first mini that I'm going to paint. Um, and we're going to start with the skin. I am going to be using the painting guide that is in the back of the instruction manual, but I'm going to be using my own paints and my own concoctions. So it's just a guide, uh, but this is going to be the beginning. So what I'm going to do is you want to paint the skin. So we're going to paint his face. Um, he's got his arms showing here. And you want to do, of course, two thin coats. I'm doing a mix of um, Vallejo model color white with a mix of Vallejo model color deep sea blue uh, or I'm sorry dark sea blue in about a 50 50 ratio maybe closer to 75 percent white 25 percent uh, dark sea blue um, but yeah that's the color I've got there so you just want to get his skin all painted up so I'm gonna go ahead and paint that and then I'm gonna come right on back and show you what that looks like okay so now that we have the skin all painted up the next thing we're gonna do is color the pants and for the pants I am doing Vallejo game color earth and again it's the same process of putting two thin coats here on the pants. So I'm going to go ahead and get these all finished painted up and I'll show you what the pants look like. So that's what it looks like with the pants all painted. Now we're going to paint the boots and the chest piece and for that I'm going to use Vallejo Game Color Camouflage Green and of course everything kind of stays the same two thin coats uh, one thing to pay attention to on this mini here is it has like a little belt at the bottom of the chest here so you want to just get to right around there. A little a little spillover, that's okay. That's what, uh, that's what cleanups are for. So we're going to paint that chest piece and we're going to paint the boots in this color here. Uh, and same, same as before, two thin coats. So I'm going to go ahead and finish painting this mini up and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so the next step we're going to do is go ahead and paint her coat and we're going to be using Vallejo Game Color Beastie Brown for that. And just like usual, you want to thin your paints on your palette and two thin coats uh, all over the jacket and you don't want it to pull here at the bottom and one thing to remember is the back side it's kind of hard to tell but behind her legs is going to be part of the cape be careful back there just take your time but any mistakes we are obviously going to fix those so i'm going to go ahead and get that painted and we'll come right back so that's what it looks like with the jacket all complete 
Uh, and while doing the jacket, I actually realized that this is not part of her arm. It's actually a sleeve that comes out from underneath the jacket. Now this is her arm. Oh, sorry. This is the arm. This is a sleeve that comes out from underneath the jacket. So I'm going to go ahead and color that in using uh, Vallejo model color buff. And we're just going to, that's the good thing about uh, painting minis is you can always just cover up your paint with more paint and as long as your layers are thin and your paints aren't too thick super easy just to go back and correct any mistakes that you make and that's the really cool thing about uh, painting minis so Go ahead and throw some paint in here. I'm going to come back after I paint these two layers so that this looks like the way that it's actually supposed to. So I will get this done and then be right back. Okay, so now that that's done, we're going to go ahead and paint the midsection and the gloves. Let me see if I can get some better focus here. And we're going to go ahead and use Vallejo model color flat brown. And it's the same process as before, just throw some paint in the midsection here, make sure your paint is thin, but also with your paint being thin, you don't want to have too much paint on your brush uh, so that it is easier to control. And notice that on the finger, on the gloves, there's actually fingers. So make sure you don't want to paint those over. So I'm going to go ahead and finish painting the gloves and that middle section, I'm not sure what to call it. Let me get that painted and then we'll come back. Okay, so now we have the gloves painted. The next thing we're going to do is go ahead and paint the hair. And for this I have done a 50-50 mix of Vallejo model color blue violet and Vallejo model color uh, white. Again, this is about a 50-50 mix and you just want to come in and get all of the hair and you want to do about two thin coats so I'm going to come back get this all painted up and come back and show you what that looks like so there's the hair all painted up and one thing I forgot was to paint these straps here on the back so I'm going to break out with a little bit of Vallejo model color flat brown and just go ahead and give those a couple quick coats. I want it to be something that sticks in, or, or I'm sorry, that that matches the jacket but also sticks out so you know that it's its own thing. So I'm going to come back and paint those real quick and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so now we have those straps all painted up and the next thing to do is to paint the gun. And for that I'm coming in with Vallejo model color gun metal gray. And just like always, you want to do two thin coats uh, with the gun metal you can actually go in and uh, paint the gun a black color before putting in the gunmetal, but I'm just going to straight gunmetal over the entire gun. So I'll paint that up and then we'll come back. So here's one final look at this uh, commander here before we go to do some highlights. Now if you want to leave it here, you totally can. 
Uh, but we are going to go and do some quick highlighting to get some some pop to this mini. Okay, so now we got this thing all painted up and we're going to go ahead and do a quick wash. I'm going to do the 50-50 wash of Agrex Earthshade thinned with Lamia Medium. I'm going to do an all over wash. Uh, we're going to hit everything but the hair and the skin on this mini. And the reason I did the dilution is because I don't want it to be too thick. And with the dilution, it'll flow a little easier into the crevices. So we're just gonna give this mini here a complete wash. And it's gonna flow into all those crevices and really start to give us some pop. So I'm gonna finish up washing this thing. Give her about 15 minutes to dry and then we'll come on back. So now that the Agrax, Agrax Earthshade is dry, we're going to come in and throw a little bit of wash on the skin. And for that, we're gonna be using uh, Oops, sorry about that. Uh, Drakenhof Nightshade. And with this, we're gonna do a one to two dilution. So one part Drakenhof Nightshade and two parts Lamia Medium. And for this, I'm not really worried about the fingers on the gloves. Uh, I think that'll just be a little too much to worry about and I don't want any of the colors to kind of run together or anything. So all I'm going to do is throw some on the arms here. Get just these fingertips. I know I just said I wasn't worried about them, but I, I lied. And we're going to do obviously the face. And we're going to give this probably another 30 minutes to dry. And we're going to come back and do some highlights. So I'll finish getting this wash on and I'll come back. So now that the washes have fully dried, we need to go back through and apply some coloring to the raised areas to start giving some definition and whatnot to the miniature. Now right now you can actually use this on the tabletop. It'll look fine. Uh, it'll roll a lot better than a purely gray mini uh, but I wanted to do some slight highlights and so we're just gonna come back in with the original base color and highlight the raised part of the skin Get some more water on my brush here um, to highlight some of the areas that would catch more light and so I'm going to come in basically just on the highest areas and reapply this first coat of paint so I'm going to go back through oops made a mistake there we'll just fix that no big deal so I'm going to go through and reapply the colors to the skin before we do the next highlight shade. So I'm going to go through, just hit a lot of the raised areas. I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so now that I reapplied those colors, I'm actually going to add just a hint of white to that original base color. And here we're going to add some highlights. And what we want to do is hit the tops of the fingers here. You want to think of all the areas that are going to get the most light. So you want to hit just the tops of those fingers, maybe a little bit 
of the arm here if you want to. You can add just a, a hint to the front end there. Kind of feather that down a little bit. So it looks like, you know, the sun or an overhead light or whatever is hitting the skin and illuminating it a little bit more. The tips of these fingers here. And then for the face, face is still something that I have issues with myself, um, but I want to hit the bridge of the nose just a little bit underneath the eye and the bottom of the chin is kind of where I like to add just a little bit of color <laughs> hopefully you can see that I know it looks it looks good in person I like how it looks in person um, I'm going to add just a little bit to the forehead and kind of blend that a bit and that'll uh, that'll give us what we're looking for for the skin and so now we're going to go ahead and move to the hair. Okay, so now we're going to move to the hair. And it's the same process. And if you look here, you've got a lot of nice ridges in this hair. So you want to leave those recesses that darker purple and hit just the outer edges of her hair it's probably time I actually changed out my brush it's a little got a little bit of a point uh, curled tip but I'm gonna make it work and so we're just going to reapply these this base color to her hair you want to leave in your darkest recesses there obviously that that shade and that darker purple and so I'm just going to color her hair and I'll show you what that looks like before I add some highlights to it so now that we've got her hair all highlighted I want to add a touch of white to that purple to lighten up her hair a little bit. This is going to be a very extreme highlight so you don't want to go too heavy I mean, you want to hit just the edges of her braids or whatever's coming out of her ponytail here to get just those tips so they look a little brighter If you hear me breathing, I do apologize. I've come down with a little bit of a cold mid-recording. So I'm trying not to make that too obnoxious, but I'm sure you've had a cold before and you realize like, there's just some things that you can't do, but we're going to power through it. So we are just giving her some, some extreme highlights here on her edge. I kind of want those to be mainly in the front. Uh, because that's what you're, you're going to see the most of on this mini here. You just kind of go through and pick out 
the ridges that you want to have the highlights and if you want even starker highlights you can add some more white you're gonna add a second or third layer right now I kinda like how that looks so I'm gonna leave that there but that's how so she looks like currently with her skin and her hair is uh, is already done okay so the next thing we're gonna do is highlight her sleeve and we've got some bridges in here that we actually want to keep a little darker so we're gonna just hit the very tops of this sleeve here with that same uh, I use buff on this sleeve I'm going to add just a tiny bit of white to that buff just to give us a little bit more of a highlight and it's okay if that at least for me that base color is still a little wet so if those, those highlights blend together and once again I'm going to add just a little bit more white and come back in again this time doing even less and one more time adding some white and this is about a 50 50 ratio at this point and we're just hitting the very very tops here so that it looks like if you look at it from underneath the sleeve is darker underneath because there's more shade there and then up top is going to be brighter and that'll do it for her sleeve and we're actually almost done with this one now this next part is kind of an up to you uh, I'm gonna highlight the gun you can leave it just as that gun metal but I actually added just a tiny bit of silver Vallejo model color or Vallejo game air steel actually and I'm gonna hit the highest ridges here just to kind of give this a little bit of a reflective uh, pop to the color. Again, you could go through and adjust dry brush with that same gunmetal color if you wanted to. And not have to worry about mixing colors if you didn't want to. Uh, you could just leave it with that gunmetal and that wash on it, which will make her gun look you know, dirty and used and very Star Wars universe. Um, I've just decided I wanted to give some highlights here just so that her gun pops just a little bit. And now I'm going to go in with just straight steel and hit just this corner of the barrel here and the scope maybe the very top just to really accentuate a few areas and that's going to be it for her gun okay so now we're going to go ahead and work on the chest piece and the boots and again we're just going to go in with the camo green and I'm sorry we're not working the chest piece working on the actual shirt here so we're gonna hit the shirt and the boots with that camo green Get a little bit more water here paint on my brush and I know it's a broken record here at this point but avoid the recesses hit the highest points so I'm gonna finish that up and show you what that looks like before we come in with a highlight So that's what that looks like with the base color reapplied and so now what I'm going to do is add a 
hint of white to that camo green and just try, try to get as many of the edges as I can here to give it a nice stark highlight and I actually thought this was a male character until the first time I was painting the chest and then I realized oops <laughs> that would be a female character which I feel is a uh, pretty cool that they they included a female character in here and you can use these these minis for <clears throat> anything even though this one has a uh, a blaster if you want her to be a saber wielder you can totally just have her be a saber wielding blaster holder um, you aren't you aren't stuck to what the good thing about legion is it's not always what you see is what you get so you can have your hero here be kind of whatever you want her to be um, so what we're doing is just hitting some of the highest points and kind of feathering out this I'm not sure what to call this over the top of her boot but we're gonna feather that out there's a little ridge here that you can see so we're gonna give that a nice swipe I like to hit the back of her boot on both sides here and then I'm going to add just a little bit more white to that color to get our final kind of extreme highlight and for this I'm really just going to aim for the collar um, the very tip of her chest and the very tip of her boots so we're gonna come in and just, you know we want to be careful of of the hair and the skin and anything we've already painted Sometimes these colors go on way brighter than how they look after they're dry. So if you think it's, whoa, it's way too bright, let the paint dry before you start to do any sort of correcting uh, because it's not always how it's going to look. And right now I'm just hitting the rest of these highest areas on her boot. Oop. And there we are. We're actually almost done with this one, guys. We just got her uh, her jacket and her pants left. So, uh, oh, and her gloves. I guess we forgot about that, huh? So, we'll get the paint ready and we'll come back for that. Okay, so now we're doing her chest piece and her gloves here. And, and we're going to not forget those straps on the back. So, first thing we want to do is uh, I want to make sure that I don't have too much paint on my brush here because we're kind of doing something a little delicate with these straps. I want to hit just this very tip. We're going to move to the gloves <clears throat> and do the same thing, get those fingertips. So 
So I'm going to finish painting up the gloves, <clears throat> this middle chest piece, and I'm going to show you what that looks like before we start hitting the highlights. Okay, so there's the hands and the straps and that little chest piece. So now what we're going to do is highlight these. And the really cool thing about leather is you can actually highlight with any color that you choose. Uh, if you want to add some green to that, add some green, you want to add some yellow, add some yellow, black, you know, whatever. You can actually add that to your base color. Because if you look at actual leather, the way it's distressed is really quite fascinating. And it's something that you can't, I mean, I guess you can mess it up. But it's really hard to distress leather in a way that you don't want it to. Uh, you can add just about any color, I feel, and it'll look awesome. Uh, I'm kind of going for this worn brownish white, like normal, typical leather here. So I'm just going to hit the very tips of the fingertips. Um, around the cuff here there's pardon me there's another on her thumb right there and kind of do the same thing on this hand here hit just the knuckles hit the thumb right here you can actually see once I throw a little bit of color on there what that looks like <clears throat> and I'm gonna hit the very tip of these we're gonna do this chest piece here and again, leave as much of the previous layer showing as you can. You can obviously, if you want to paint all of it over, you can totally do that. It just depends on how you want your mini to look. And I'm going to add a little bit more white. This is going to be my uh, kind of extreme highlight. This is just going to go on basically this knuckle here. And this is one of those <clears throat> fun things that you can paint with. You can do some stippling. You can uh, layer it if you wish. You can blend it. Leather is really an interesting piece to paint and I have grown to really like painting leather. I used to actually really hate it. Um, you'll see why when it gets to, <laughs> I'm sorry, when I get to the coat um, because I feel my highlights on that coat are going to be way more extreme than I want them to be um, but we'll see again this is uh, this is me helping you get to a tabletop quality this is not going to win you any awards but I think it's going to look really good and um, if you have any hints and tips and tricks and things you want to teach me please I'm, I'm all for it so that's where she looks there we're gonna throw just a little bit of highlight in that midsection there there we go she looks cool all right we've got just the jacket and pants left and then we'll uh sealer do the base and we'll be done so I'm gonna get my paints ready for the pants and we'll be right back okay 
Now we're going to go ahead and work on the pants. And again, we're going to go back with that Vallejo Game Color Earth. And you want to leave as much in the recesses as possible. So we're going to hit a lot of the ridges and such in her pants. And when you're doing highlighting, I find it best to have a little paint, uh, or as little paint as you can on the brush. Don't overload your brush. Go in, go slowly, pick an area, give it a quick little layer, and then come back after it dries. You might not like the color that it looks like when you put it on the mini, but give it a minute, let it dry, paint the rest of the mini, or the rest of that color, and then decide what you decide, what you feel is best. Because sometimes you're going to put a color down and you're not going to like how it looks in one particular area, and then once you finish putting that color down everywhere you realize oh this looks actually really good so I'm gonna get these pants all painted up and before we do the highlight I'll come back and show you what that looks like okay so there's the pants and now we're going to go ahead and add some highlights to those pants and I'm gonna take that Vallejo Earth color that I used for her pants and add some buff. It's about a 50 50 ratio, and we're gonna hit a lot, and I mean a lot of these ridges because um, I actually really like my pants to, to kind of stand out. You don't have to do this, obviously, um, but. I actually really like having a lot of layers and a lot of focus um, honestly on those those pants they've got a lot of lines a lot of creases and crevices and, and doing different layers different thicknesses uh, different colors really kind of helps all those things kind of pop out. Uh, so yeah, we're just gonna really give this give this mini a nice a nice bath in this highlight color before we move on to another highlight. We're gonna I'm actually think I'm gonna highlight this probably three or four times. Um, I just really like, like I said, I really like my pants to kind of pop and look like they're, they've been worn and they're seeing light from a few different angles and a few different um, sources. So now I'm going to add some more buff to that. It's probably about a two to one ratio, two parts buff, one part of that earth color. And again, just hitting the ridges. And I want to hit less this time. But I still want it to kind of pop here. And um, my, my most extreme highlights are going to be around that knee area. But we really kind of kind of hit as much as we can. <clears throat> also, don't get a cold. Just a just a little tip from me to you. Um, yeah, they're not they're not fun, especially when you're trying to. record some voice and 
you can hear yourself breathing, so you're pretty sure that the people watching and listening and such can hear you breathing. And it probably doesn't make for a very good experience. Um, but as I'm still new to all of this, all that's going to change and I'll figure out different ways to edit and such. Okay, so now I'm going to add some more buff. And this is probably around a 3 to 1 ratio. And now I'm kind of going to just hit the highest points. I don't want to, this is the color that I don't want to be everywhere. I want this to kind of pop. Um, so it looks like it's transitioning to this color here. definitely want to concentrate around this kneecap and these ridges here these ridges really look like they're they're getting a lot of light uh, and a really good job on this sculpt here so I want to make sure to accentuate that area how that looks okay and now we're gonna come to my least favorite part which is gonna be the jacket um, yeah but so far she's uh she's looking pretty hot not gonna lie I'm, I'm a fan so I'm making my colors ready for the jacket and we'll be right back okay so now what we're gonna do is tackle the part that I actually don't want to tackle because I think it's gonna mess up the mini but you live and you learn right um, so now we're going to go ahead and do the jacket and the first thing I'm going to do is grab the beastie brown color and just hit a lot of the highlights, the edges and such. Um, and just leave a lot of those recesses, you know, we keep saying. Leave the recesses, leave the recesses, and again, leave the recesses. So I'm going to start painting this guy up here, this lady up, sorry. And I'm going to show you what that looks like before we do the highlights. So I'll get that done and we'll be right back. Alright, so this is kind of what the overcoat slash jacket's going to look like. You've got some areas that I'm still finishing up here. You want to drag your brush down towards the bottom because that's where most light is actually going to hit this coat here. So after I get two layers down, I actually am going to add some of that flat brown. I'm just actually going to darken it. I know it sounds kind of weird, but just kind of roll with me here. I'm going to add some of that dark brown, which gives it kind of a red hue. And go back through and start hitting a lot of those highlights, a lot of those edges. Oops. I really like that red hue that it gives. Um, and then we're going to come back through and re-highlight all of this stuff again but we're going to just add more of that beastie brown that was the base color for highlighting
this is the area that I'm going to struggle with the most. I'm not going <clears> to... <throat> I won't lie to you on that. I have an issue with the coats sometimes. Where I want to highlight the folds too much. And then I end up highlighting them too much. And they kind of stand out. And I'm hoping to avoid that here. But... I'm going to go ahead and say that's not likely. <laughs> so we're just highlighting a lot of these ridges. Hitting a lot of the areas that we know we're going to see. You know, more light, more sunlight, etc, etc. Okay, so now I'm going to add a little bit of white to that to kind of dull down that color that we just did <clears throat> and I want to hit the tips of everything and if you look it's, it's going to give you that stark contrast right away and I kind of like the cartoony semi cell shaded borderlands type look on this um, you might not be going for that so instead of adding white, you could add a, a, a darker, or I'm sorry, a lighter brown. You could add, you know, it's just like leather. You could add yellow if you wanted to. What you have to decide is what you want on your mini. Because at the end of the day, my favorite, not favorite, sports phrase, the mini's yours. And it has been scientifically proven that painted minis roll better than unpainted minis. So even if you get just a base coat down, just get a base coat down. Get whatever you can on your mini. So that you always roll crits and blocks. Crits and blocks. Because <laughs> that's what we want. Crits and blocks. I'm just going through and finding as many of these ridges that I think need some extra little oomph and just throw a little bit of paint on there. There's something to help them stick out just a little bit. So I'm going to keep highlighting <clears throat> this mini here and I'll come back and show you what that looks like after this step is done. Okay, I'm going to add one more highlight color. Again, I'm just going to add some white to that previous mix that we already had. This is going to be very, very light. So you do not want to highlight too many areas or else it's going to come off a little bright yep see there we go it's already a little bright going with a brush and kind of feather that out a little bit <clears throat> Kind of hit this edge here. It's definitely time for some new brushes. My my brushes are starting to fray a little bit. There we go. That looks good. That looks good. Uh-huh. <laughs> 
<coughs> I'll go to the other side here. And kind of do the same thing. Just hitting the tips here. You really want to be pretty, pretty conservative with these, with this highlight. So I'm going to finish up these highlights and I'll show you what that looks like and after that we're actually ready to seal and base. And there we go, we've got her all completed. Highlights are done on her jacket. Uh, I think she actually turned out quite alright. Um, yeah, let me know what you think. All I'm going to do for the base is paint it gray and then dry brush some some or paint it black and dry brush different shades of gray that'll be you'll be able to see that in the thumbnail but there she is let me know what you want what you think this is my very first painting tutorial for a mini I'd done a few for bases that that turned out okay uh, obviously I'm still learning videography and photography and lighting and all that normal stuff that comes with painting minis and this is just going to be a, a tabletop quality so if you're expecting Sorastro you're not going to get Sorastro here but hopefully this helped you out gave you some pointers some tips uh, let me know what you thought and if you want to see some more I will gladly do that uh, but other than that take care guys thanks for watching